Что у вас, пацаны, тут драмчик, да? Ну давай. У нас панкуха. Hi everyone, I just want to give you a quick explanation of this chart. So here we have a four-cylinder engine. We've got, you can see the ignition coils here. It's got four of them, so we have four cylinders in this particular car. SUVs and minivans will usually have six-cylinder engines and trucks six to eight cylinders. So on this chart you will see the number of cylinders in each engine. And RPM stands for revolutions per minute. So how fast the engine is turning at any given time. At idle, when you're just at a stoplight, it'll probably do about 700. When you're cruising down the highway, it could be anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 RPM at about 65 miles an hour. 
So on this particular car, which is a four cylinder, you can see here, four cylinders, cruising down the highway at about 2,500 RPM, you'd be producing about 5,000 fires every minute that the engine is turning. I hope this helps. You can also reference the chart for different engine sizes. As you can see, six, eight, 10, 12. 10 and 12, that's usually something you'll find in supercars, not your daily drivers, but it gives you an idea of just how many fires are created inside these things. Hope this helps. A car engine generates power from the expansion of compressed air in a contained cylinder with the help of fuel. That is why it's called as an internal combustion engine. Before getting into the working, let's see the main parts involved in the working of an engine. First, the crankshaft. This is the part which converts the linear motion of the piston to a rotational force. Next, the pistons and the piston rods. The pistons will be pushed down by the expansion of compressed air and turns the crankshaft. And the valves, which controls the flow of air and fuel into the cylinders. These valves are driven by the intake camshaft and the exhaust camshaft and the camshafts are driven by the crank itself, using a timing belt. There will be idle a pulleys, and a tension a pulley, to hold the belt tight in place. This here, is the internal structure, of a four-stroke, inline four-cylinder, DOHC engine, which is commonly found in most hatchback and sedan cars. A four-stroke engine should pass through four different strokes, to complete one cycle to produce power. They are intake, compression, power, and exhaust stroke. The crank to camshaft ratio is 2 is to 1. Which means it will take two crank revolutions, to complete one camshaft revolution. And the camshafts are designed in a responsive manner, to open or close based on the corresponding strokes, of each cylinder. Let's take a look at a single cylinder, and see how a four-stroke engine works in detail. In order to ignite the air-fuel mixture, a spark plug is used. This will ignite the compressed air-fuel mixture, with the help of an electrical spark. We will take it down by each stroke. The intake stroke. The inlet valve opens and the downward movement of the piston creates a suction. This pulls the air-fuel mixture into the cylinder. Once the air-fuel mixture is in the cylinder, Compression stroke begins compressing the mixture. At this time both inlet and outlet valves stays closed. At the end of compression stroke, the air fuel mixture is ignited by the spark plug. The explosion exerts pressure and pushes the piston down. This is the power stroke which produces power to the crank. At the exhaust stroke, the outlet valves opens and the piston pushes out the burned gas. The cycle starts again from intake stroke, keeping the engine running and produces power. For a carburetor engine, the air and fuel are mixed inside the carburetor assembly, and fed to the cylinders. In the case of a fuel injected engine, the fuel is injected into the intake manifold, or directly into the cylinders. Since only a power stroke produces power, you may wonder how the engine turns continuously, well, the answer is in the crank itself. The flywheel and the crank counterweights provides momentum, which keeps the crankshaft from stopping immediately. For a four-cylinder engine, considering any time instance, one cylinder is always in power stroke, which produces more power and less vibrations comparing to a single-cylinder engine. And that is how a car engine produces power in simple. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more presentations from Autotech Labs.
People sometimes say that I mention Shabbat too often. First of all, it's mentioned in almost every parasha. It's literally mentioned all over the Torah. If you look at it, if you look at just this week's parasha, we have the holiest place in the world next to the holiest creation in the world, which is the Torah. And Hashem could have connected the two with any mitzvah, with kosher, with brit milah, with tefillin, with nida, with marriage, with having kids, with the specific things that the Kohen Gadol needed to do, with the holy work that Moshe Rabbeinu had to do, the laws of court, the laws of, of, of business. You have three masechtot in the Gemara that talk about business. Why don't you put that in there? Why don't you talk about uh, making sure that people don't eat pig? Why don't you make sure people that uh, dress modestly? If all the mitzvot, you have 613 mitzvot you can choose between Bet HaMikdash and Torah. Hashem says no. One mitzvah is the entire Torah. This one mitzvah is like 613 mitzvahs. That's why Shukhan Aruch says, someone that violates Shabbat, violates the entire Torah. But let's say you found a loophole. You can keep 612 mitzvot except Shabbat. It's worth zero. For Bidiuk zero, Ephes, nothing. They considered a goy. They considered non Jewish 100%. But the Shukhan Aruch says someone who violates Shabbat is considered a non Jew 100%. If he touches wine, you're not allowed to drink it. You spill it out. You can't even give it to your dog. If he says Kaddish, it actually hurts the person in Shemaim. It doesn't help them. Should not say Kaddish. You're not allowed to be a Chazan. It says a Machloket if you're even allowed to say Kaddish on him. Rabbi Yavadia says if it's a Vikli Vacha, someone doesn't keep Shabbat, you're allowed to lend him money with interest. You know, it's a big sin to lend a Jew money with interest. He says someone is, uh, that's not keeping Shabbat, not considered Jewish, lend him money with interest. The Chumrah of somebody is not keeping Shabbat, people don't understand this. People of Mash Mamash don't understand the significance of not keeping Shabbat. It's 86 pages of punishment for someone in Mechale Shabbat. 86 pages. Someone that drives to shul has a serious problem. The Torah source, it says here, Ach et Tishmoru, Kiot Ibn Yehuda Ben Yisrael Shabbat Shalom. So it says here twice. Hashem said to Moses saying, Now you speak to the children of Israel saying, However, you must observe my Sabbaths. The reason why it says Sabbath is not because there's two Shabbats a week. It's because you can't just keep one Shabbat and think that it's okay. For it is a sign between me and you for your generations to know that I am Hashem who makes you holy. You shall observe the Sabbath for it is holy to you. It's desecrators, someone who violates the Shabbat, shall be put to death. Shall we put to death? 
is mot yumat. Mot yumat doesn't actually mean put to death. It means death upon death. It's two deaths. Mot yumat means death in this world, early death. They're cutting their life in this world. And yumat means they have no share of the world to come. So whoever does work on it, that soul shall be cut off from amongst its people. Violating Shabbat is the biggest sin in Jerusalem. Hashem take it so offensively when we violate Shabbat? Why is it the same like idol worship? We said with idol worship you're replacing everything with nothing, right? So why is Shabbat such a big deal? Because technically Hashem created Shabbat only for us. It has nothing to do with Him. What does it mean? Hashem technically created the world in one second. He didn't take six days. It didn't take him six days to make the moon. He didn't have to go call the city to get a title and get the construction company to come and make the moon and get another construction company to come, but they didn't show up. And then he got another one and he made the sun. No, he didn't need all of this. If Hashem is the same Hashem in the Torah, he's Hashem all the time, which means he's unlimited. He's unlimited. He can do whatever he wants. Which means that he created everything in one second. But over the next six days, he put it in the right place. Why did he do it six? Why didn't he just do it one day? Or one second? He made, okay, so I made the sun, I made the moon, I made the stars, I made the planets, grass, tens of thousands of different animals. Why did he take six days? Because says, if I give Am Yisrael, which is the purpose of creation, one day a week, then every day is going to be the same thing. But if I give them six days a week, every day is going to be different. But if I give them seven days a week, or on the six days, they could work just like I, figuratively speaking, worked. But on the seventh day, I rested. Not rested like he went to sleep. Hashem doesn't go to sleep. Hashem doesn't rest. He doesn't need, uh, he doesn't need to do exercise or wake up in the morning. So Hashem says, I want to give my, my children I want to give them a feeling to be like me. I want to give them a feeling to be like the king. I want to make them a part of creation. So how can they, they can't feel like a god, they can't create anything. So what do I give them? I give them a feeling like I had on Shabbat. What's the feeling? Of not doing it, of stopping this, these things that I did, this creation that I did during those six days, I stopped creating, so they're going to stop creating. Which in essence means, that a Jew is supposed to feel like a king on Shabbat. And that's why Hashem made Shabbat. But why does Hashem take it so offensively? Why is he so angry when we violate it? Because he's saying to you, I technically created the world in one second, or less than a second. In no time. Hashem doesn't have time. The past, the present, the future is all the same thing. I created the world in an instant. Whatever an instant is, he created it in an instant, right? But I minimized myself, I minimized myself to stretch it out for you. For you to feel like me. For you to feel like you are part of creation. For you to feel like God felt on the seventh day. And instead of saying, thank you, Hashem, Baruch Hashem for the Shabbat. I can't wait for the Shabbat. Let me do great things for the Shabbat and preparing for the Shabbat. What are you saying? Like that woman. I don't want this diamond. I minimize myself, but you're not willing to minimize yourself to stop your life. 
Hashem Ibarach minimized and said, oh, for this Jew, I minimize myself. But he's not willing to minimize himself for Shabbat and stop his job. Or stop his television. Or stop anything else that he's doing. And that is very, very offensive. The Rambam says, whoever observes a Shabbat and honors it, and indulges in pleasures, in its pleasures to the best of his ability, will receive an abundant reward in this world, in addition to the reward set aside for him in the world to come. In the merit of observing Shabbat, just so you know how big it is for tshuva, all of one's sins can be forgiven. Even if someone had worshipped an idol, Observing as the halakha dictates, he will be forgiven for it, even for idol worship. That's how strong the Shabbat is. There's no tshuva without Shabbat. No such thing. The same Rambam says the mitzvah of Shabbat is equivalent to all the mitzvot in the Torah combined eternal connection between the blessed Holy One and us. This is Rambam, again, it's not me. Therefore, someone who transgresses any of the other mitzvot of the Torah is still considered a Jew. They forget to do prayer after they eat. They go with a woman they're not supposed to be with. Different things. They shave with a razor. Woman's not modest, different things. There's unfortunately many, many sins we can make. It says they make a sin, they still consider a Judah. Wicked, but they're still a Jew. Someone who publicly desecrates Shabbat, drives on Shabbat, smokes a cigarette in public on Shabbat, or everyone knows he's smoking, is considered for all Allahic purposes be on the level of the member of the idolatrous nation. Not only is he not considered Jewish, he's considered an idol worshiper. Not being Jewish is already bad. We tell people, no, 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 forget about not, not being Jewish is the least of your problems right now. You're considered an idol worshiper. You're considered the worst possible thing you can be. This is Rambam, Yilchot Shabbat third. If a Jew does not observe Shabbat, he lowers himself to less than the status of a dumb beast. To achieve atonement, meaning to do tshuva, he must be stoned to death. Just like we learned about Zlokhaz. That's the punishment. In order for him to do tshuva, he has to be stoned to death. If he is not stoned, the connection of his soul with God and his Torah will be severed. Therefore, this is the scary part. Therefore, executing him, meaning stoning him, is actually doing him a great favor. People have no idea, no idea that this stuff even exists. I don't beat around the bush. I don't tell you, listen, just keep half the Shabbat. Then let's see what happens. No such thing. This is what you have to do. Whether you do it or not, it's up to you. It's your business. It's never okay to sin. It's never okay to not keep. Hashem said it, you have to do it. First thing you have to do is you have to start keeping Shabbat. Shabbat is when I make most of my business. I say, okay, so now it's not. You have to make sure that Hashem knows your tshuva is genuine. People don't understand. Hashem is not kidding. He's not kidding. We're still alive. We still have a chance. Like Rabbi Yisrael from Salat, started Musal movement, one of the greatest minds that ever lived. As long as the candle is lit, you still have a chance of tshuva. This is what Hashem is telling us here. I'm not kidding. Whether you had the Torah for a week, or you just discovered it today, 
or you had it for 3,000 years and you just ignored it, irrelevant. As soon as you find out Shabbat exists, you have to keep it to the best of your knowledge.